This video is about good mindset. It's about keeping a good mindset, understanding your feelings and emotions, and it's about the evolution of your mindset over time through coaching. Laura, lovely to speak with you. As well. Talk to me about mindset. Firstly, what does that even mean? So mindset is really all the stuff that goes on in our brains 24-7, that chatterbox that is constantly going. We cannot turn it off. And the question is, what do you listen to of it and what do you ignore? So what do you listen to it and what do you ignore? <laughs> Well, ideally, you hopefully just listen to the stuff that's going to help you, but there's definitely voices that we hear, and this is not about having voices in our heads that, you know, there's definitely illnesses of like schizophrenia. That's not right. what we're talking about. Right. This is just like normal human. This is normal human uh -huh. behavior where, you know, there's voices that can be very critical and very judgmental. Right. And also self critical. Very, very self critical. Yeah. Um, there's a body of research that has uh, a dear friend of mine, Susan Brady, has really done a great work at synthesizing. And it, in the, the body of work is all about what's called the inner critic. And it's that voice in our head that is really harsh, not only to ourselves, but to others around us, where we can be very judgmental of actions that we've taken, but also actions that others have taken. And uh, I don't know how to spell this, but if you, you know the idea of going, and the eyebrow goes up and you kind of got this attitude. Yeah. That's the judgmental sound. If I had a little circle here with three dots going down, it would be like, Really? You know. And this is not so much a helpful place to live. Well, imagine living in that judgmental place and the impact on others. So when we start talking about mindset, do we understand that if we're being judgmental, what are the actions that follow that mindset compared to being in a centered place where we understand that you're, you've got value and so do I? And um, looking at that from a mutual place, what actions follow and the difference and the impact on others and being led by someone like that. Compared to the third one, I, I, I'm doing this because there's an up and down arrow in my head going, those, who have, uh, those of us who might be coming from a place of fear or concern or shame, that part of it is, you know, we are not living to our full potential and our power. We're hiding out, waiting for stuff to pass us by. Again, what kind of actions follow there? And so people can answer this for themselves going, you know what? I don't want to be led. I yeah. don't want to lead. I want to be in that middle one. Yes. So talk to me about this from a, uh, I want to say a personal, but also a business context. Because yeah. what I'm seeing here is that with good mindset, if I can keep a good mindset, if I can be arguably aware of this judgmental slash fear-based yes. uh, uh, mindset, then I wind up uh, in a better place right in the middle. What does that look like day to day for a person? Yeah. So day to day, we have to constantly be monitoring how we're thinking. And if we're out of center, it's A, being aware of it and seeing it like, S -s noticing our triggers because there's things constantly like someone walks in the office and they'll look at you in a funny way. Have you ever had it and you all of a sudden think, oh my God, my boss is going to fire me today because he or she looked at me in a certain way and now it's done. And, and that whole day, I mean, forget your productivity. Right, right. you're, <laughs> you're you toast. Yeah. But the reality is they just were having a bad day themselves. So the question is, how much do we really listen and allow that voice to guide us? And so the constant calibration is asking ourselves, is it true? Like, One that, uh, yeah. for what it's worth, that comes up for me a lot is that uh, my, my mind will run wild with a story. Yes. That is a fear story, for example. Arguably, one's on a plane and the plane drops and you think that's it. And your mind goes, long, all off it goes. And my kind of answer is to become conscious and just go, story. And as soon as I go, story, I can let it go. Right on. But if I haven't identified it, I'm in it and I'm stuck. What are some of the things that you can do over time yes. to identify and get out of this way of thinking? So I love the analogy. Now, many of us don't live near snow, but I'm going to give a, a sledding analogy. So if any of you have ever sled it, have you ever sled? Before? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So you know that like when you're at the top of the hill and you're on your sled and the first time you go down, kind of like a foot deep of snow, mm. how fast can your sled go? Well, pretty quick. It can, if it depending upon. Now, oh, like, I see. Yeah, but your underneath first time, it, but yeah, your you're first kind of time, you're You kind of have to cut the path yeah, and move your yeah. hands through. My apologies. Right. You're quite right. And then the second time, is it a slower or faster experience? The more it gets compressed under you. Yes. The quicker you go. Exactly. And the further you go. Yes. So this is the same analogy to mindset. 
So if there's a thought that recreates in our brain where we end up at that bottom of that hill and it's not a healthy thought and it's a judgmental thought, mm. we have to be conscious of taking a different pathway at the top of that hill. And I the see. way and a quick and easy way to do this is A, to recognize you've just gone down the hill. Be kind to yourself and know, okay, I realize I messed up. Get curious, why did that happen? And then think about what's the thought that is going to create a new pathway down. Like, you know what? I think you're going to be doing it in a different way than I would, and I want to see what you come up with, versus there's no way he's going to come up with that. Or I would, I'll just do it. Or So the idea is training your brain to reuse that pathway again and again that the positive serves one. the positive the one. That one. Serves. But you have to be conscious of it. You have to be aware. Okay, so now I'm getting, uh, when it comes to mindset, that I need to be taking the middle path, uh, and finding those more sort of self-serving and productive pathways, but I'm also getting that this might be very difficult to do on your own. One thing that you've been part of over time, in the corporate environment particularly, is ongoing mindset coaching. Yes. What does it look like to coach someone? What kind of outcomes are you seeing? Yeah, so uh, I'm thinking of a particular client right now that does international HR work, and it's been an amazing transformation of helping her get out of uh, basically a role of disempowerment. And disempowerment can happen really in one of three ways. Sometimes we fall into a victim mode where someone else is doing it. She's got a CEO that's a challenge, mm. and she goes into, there's nothing I can do. And I'm like, really? Is there nothing, nothing you can do? Right. Nothing at all? Right. And so she starts seeing by someone questioning her in her victim place because the second role can be a bully, and that's a role that really precludes someone from being fully uh, connected yeah, with must them. be disempowering, surely. Completely. And the third is a rescuer. I'm going to just come in and save the day. All three of those are disempowering. Because if the, you're constantly rescued, how do you find your strength? Exactly. And mm. you're not doing anyone favors by rescuing them. Mm. So the whole idea of your mindset work is kind of to draw, if you have that in a triangle, is draw that dotted line and look at it from an observer role mm. and see the role play out. And in the executive coaching we do, Majority of the drama that plays out in organizations falls into, I've been finding, 90% fall into there's people who are being bullies, rescuers, or victims, and they're disempowering their, themselves and or others. And as soon as you can separate yourself out and see what's going on, you are far more powerful to be able to A, say what you see, see how you want it to be, and then lead yourself from A to B. And if you have a large company, with hundreds of thousands of people. Yes. Now this energy arguably permeates. Yes. And now you have 170,000 disempowered folks. Cannot be as good for your bottom line. Right. Thank you so much for your insight here. I appreciate yes. that. Thanks. For those of you who'd like to find out more, please visit us online at purposestone.com. Also, feel free to like this video, share this video if you have any questions in the comments section below, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel.